Welcome to West Lafayette and welcome to primetime football today on the Big Ten Network. Football the Big Ten Network is presented by Hampton by Hilton tonight. The final non-conference game of the season as the one and two Purdue Boilermakers welcome the Owls from Florida Atlantic at two and two on the year. And with that, we welcome you upstairs, everybody, alongside Jake Butt. I'm Corey Provis. Megan McEwen joins us from the field in just a bit. Well, despite some amazing offensive numbers to begin the year, Purdue sits at 1-2. and two. And for Jake, for this team to get back in the win column tonight, they'll have a new quarterback, in fact, perhaps new quarterbacks, because sixth-year senior Aiden O'Connell will not play tonight. Well, Corey, these are certainly less than perfect situations for the Purdue Boilermakers in what has really become a must-win game. Aiden O'Connell is not only your starter, but he's one of the best quarterbacks in the conference and really the country. But Jeff Brom thinks he has two very capable quarterbacks in Burton and Alimo. Now, in a perfect world, you have a decided, definitive backup quarterback. But this battle has gone on all the way back to spring ball. And for these guys, not only is it your chance to go win a game today, but it's a chance to prove to yourselves, your teammates, and the staff that you are the guy for the number two role to back up this Purdue offense. So Burton will start, but we will see plenty of Alimo as well tonight. So O'Connell is out, but whom we will see on the field tonight is maybe, forget the Big Ten, one of the best wide receivers going in college football in Charlie Jones. Well, and he had so much chemistry going back to Pee Wee football. He was roommates of Aiden O'Connell when he came here. He's not going to be afforded that luxury with these two guys today, but I believe he certainly proved to that quarterback room in critical situations when the money's on the line. Throw it up to 15, and he's going to come down with it. I imagine as both these guys are trying to make their stamp on the Purdue offense they're going to be dialing up charlie jones early and often yeah he is flourishing in this high-powered purdue offense so he is a great story and speaking of good stories starting a quarterback tonight is austin burden and for, him, for more on him we send it down to the field and say good evening to megan McEwen. For years, Austin Burton's mentor has been telling him to stay patient and trust the process. And if anybody knows a thing or two about staying patient and trusting the process, it's Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady. Brady and the Burton family have been friends for years, dating all the way back to Brady's time in New England. In fact, when Austin was 10, he had the opportunity to go on the field with Brady and toss the ball around. Who better to play catch with, by the way, than a future Hall of Famer? These two have maintained a relationship throughout the years. In fact, when Austin was at UCLA, he had a missed call from an unknown number. It was Tom Brady who left a voicemail saying, Austin, stay patient and trust the process. Your time will eventually arrive. And I guess Tom Brady knew what he was talking about because Austin Burton's time has officially arrived as he makes his first career start at Purdue. All right, Beckett, thank you very much. Toss and defer to the second half. So Purdue will get the ball first to begin the game tonight. Don't forget to download the Fox Weather app today. A beautiful night. How about 72 degrees? Partly cloudy, light winds, wonderful atmosphere. First ever meeting. Owls, Boilermakers underway in West Lafayette. Charlie Jones back receiving kicks. And here comes Charlie. And Charlie mm. tripped up across the 20 yard line. So Charlie Jones was not able to return punts and kicks in the second half last week. Cleared to do that tonight. And here we go again. Jake, story number one offensively, Austin Burton will make his first career start with the Boilermakers, second career start last time it happened with UCLA. Oh, and, and talking to Payne Durham, talking to this coaching staff, the one word that kept coming up with him is veteran. Now he's in his sixth year, so he's seen a lot of things. He's been in this program for three years. He's comfortable with the complex Jeff uh, Brom offense and passing scheme. Here early in this game, as you're getting your first start, try to dial up some easy completions, get this offense in a rhythm. On its first possession of each game, Purdue has thrown the ball, but here in game number four, they run it, and that's going to be Dylan Downing for a gain of two, a walk-on. Transfer from UNLV. 26th carry on the season for Downing. King Dobru is out again tonight as he's dealing with a calf injury, so Downing the starting tailback. We'll see the walk-on, Devin Mockaby, and maybe Kobe Lewis in the backfield for Purdue tonight. And now here's Burton. This is his game. Here's an option flip. And is Downing. And Downing down the sideline. And Downing with a big run. And that's what Burton does bring, that run-pass option. 
skill set and a big play for the Boilermakers. Certainly. They didn't refer to him as a scrambling quarterback, but they said he's more prone to run than Aiden O'Connell. He feels a little more comfortable on the move. That time he gets outside, he feels the safety play him, makes the correct read on the pinch, and downing down the sidelines for a big game to start the game. From inside the 45-yard line, here's Burton throwing, and there is Charlie Jones, and he's wrapped up after a gain of about four by Smoke Munchen. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance and Jake for the Boilermakers on offense. Well, no mystery there. Number 15, Charlie Jones. He's your go-to guy. And if they if FAU wants to shut him down, it's going to be on 22, Jaden Williams. If they do double 15, Charlie Jones, that's going to create some one-on-one -on -one matchups for your stud tight end, Payne Durham. He's going to have to win when the opportunities come his way. After a gain of five, quick hit once again is Jones. Nice blocking. As he is stacked up about a yard shy of the first down by linebacker Morvin Joseph. If you're looking for the Northwestern Miami Ohio game, go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to see where you can find the game in your area. Well, you can see it already, Corey. Two out of the first four plays, they get Burton on the move. Once in an option, once sprinting out to his right. They said that's where he's most comfortable. Gotten a nice little rhythm here, but here you are third and short. Your playbook is wide open. This is a huge down for the quarterback here, getting his first start. You really want to convert and try to move the chains to go down and score a touchdown. A third down and one. It's Burton faking it to Tracy, and Burton will keep it right on cue. Jake Butt, that's a first down as Burton kept the ball. Excellent. First to 10, Purdue. Excellent scheme. Last week, they put Tyrone Tracy in the backfield. They gave, they did some unique things. That time, they bring him in the jet sweep, fake the handoff, and it gets the linebackers to vacate the middle of the field. Burton sees that, tucks his shoulder, and goes rumbling, tumbling, stumbling. Moving the chains. It's a gain of nine for Burton. First down. Mockaby the tailback, and here is the walkout. A great story for Purdue early on. He scampers for about two. Redshirt freshman from Boonville, Indiana. As we look at the starting lineup tonight for the Boilermakers on offense, and you see Hershon Rice and Sheffield. Payne Durham has been fantastic despite the late penalty last week that was costly. Offensive line, right tackle Daniel Johnson starts. Cam Craig is out with an injury tonight. Gain of two. It's Burton. Throws. Might could be the catch. First down as he's knocked out of bounds inside the 15 yard line by Armani Eli Adams. Burnett all day. That is a great scheme. FAU's bringing the, the blitz off the bottom of your left side screen here. Maccabi bluffs him, and then no one has him in man coverage. Burton sees that, throws a nice back shoulder play, nice back shoulder ball, easy, comfortable catch, and right now, Burton in a really, really good rhythm. Just been marching steadily down the field, putting the pressure on this FAU defense. That time, an excellent scheme by Jeff Brom and the Purdue offense. On first and 10 from the 13-yard line, they set up the screen to Jones, and that's well contained by the Owls. Smoke Mungin among those that provided the containment for FAU. As for the Owls on defense, Jacob Merrifield, redshirt freshman. It's a young, young front for the Owls. Jaleel McCray back this week, did not play the second half due to a targeting penalty and the loss at home against UCF. And that secondary, Jake, that'll be tested tonight. Certainly, and they're getting a big piece back. He's not there on your board, but look out for number four, TJ Young. He's their veteran. He's their vocal leader. He's got high football IQ. They said he's really good at route recognition and calling out offensive plays. Here's Tyrone Tracy Jr. Makes a cut and then is brought down at around the eight-yard line. After a gain of three. Tyrone Tracy Jr. He arrived... Like Charlie Jones from Iowa, he arrived first, though. Jones came later, and when he arrived on campus, offensive coordinator Brian Brown wasn't sure if he was going to be a wideout or a running back. Yeah, sometimes that can be a negative. We call it a tweener, but sometimes it can be a positive. And when you have a creative play caller like Jeff Brom, he's going to use Tyrone Tracy to his advantage. Here you see him in the backfield, lining up at running back now. Now you're motioning, motioning out to empty. Look at what that's doing to the FAU defense. It's forcing them to communicate and be, get them on their heels. On third and four, towards the end zone. That's in for six. Touchdown, Charlie Jones.
outstanding drive by Purdue. Burton and Jones connect for six, and the Boilermakers are on the board. This is just my guy on your guy. Nothing, nothing too crazy about this, just an out route. And Jones, he is a technician running routes, little five-yard ball, and then Burton delivers a strike. He was really accurate. You just you could feel how comfortable he was on that first drive. We talked about it. The first 15 plays are scripted. That's on Jeff Brom doing a great job getting his quarterback comfortable and into this game. Extra point up and good from Mitchell Finneran. O'Connell out. Burton in, leading a touchdown drive to begin the night for the Boilermakers. A 77-yard drive. Burton to Jones. Purdue by seven. Football of the Big Ten Network is presented by Hampton by Hilton. Homecoming here in West Lafayette, the 100th homecoming at Purdue University. And Pete enjoying his night so far, and so is that group. Ten play drive, 77 yards. Charlie Jones finds the end zone for the sixth time this season. First time, though, that Austin Burton threw him the ball for a Purdue score. Jay Sean Platt awaits the kick from Chris Van Ekren. And no return for Platt, and the Owls will have the ball from their own 25-yard line. Jake, let's go back to the drive led by Austin Burton a moment ago. So one thing to note here is you come into these games with your first 10 to 15 plays scripted. So this is a great job by Jeff Brown understanding what his quarterback does best. Where is he most comfortable? You see some easy, quick screen passes, not asking too much of them, not asking for him to make six, seven reads downfield, but just throws that are gonna get him confident early in this game, get it to your best receiver in Charlie Jones, and get you on the move, which is when he's at his best. So that great job by Burton, but certainly an excellent job by uh, Jeff Brown getting his quarterback in an early rhythm. The Owls quarterback is sixth year senior Nikosi Perry, and this is an Owls team that will try and run the football tonight. They do so with Larry McCannon, junior from Hoover, Alabama. Uh, Perry began his collegiate career at Miami, his second year at Boca Raton. Ten touchdown passes already this season, fifth best in FBS. Yeah, he's been he's been a stud. And listen, this Purdue defense, it's no hiding it, especially in the secondary. They have struggled with defensive pass interference, with penalties, and giving up shots down the field. So, Nicozy Perry, he's going to provide an excellent test to see if the secondary has made any changes. And on the jet sweep, mm. spinning across the 30-yard line is Lejante Wester. I'll tell you what. As we take a look at our impact players, brought to you by Auto's Auto Owners Insurance for the Owls and offense, Jake. Well, Larry McCammon is known for running the ball, but that last play, he laid the wood on an excellent block on Kieran Douglas. And listen, if we know FAU wants to run the ball, then how do you stop it? You need a big fella, Branson Dean, in the middle to create some havoc. And one thing he does better than anyone on this defense is leadership. Critical situations are going to rely on him to get this defense on the same page and playing high quality football. Purdue has been very good on third down defense to start the year. It's McCannon trying the middle. He is stacked up and he is short. Loris Johnson, number 90, plugged that hole from the get go. No gain. It's fourth down. This is huge. You just go down and score. FAU's trying to answer. And third and two, this is an identity. We talked to Ron English. He said, well, our defense needs an identity. At some point, you got to say, these guys are coming into our house and stealing our cookies. That time, Lawrence Johnson said, you're not taking my cookies. <laughs> Stones the back. He meets a brick wall and stops him. And now you get the ball back in your offensive's hands, a chance to take command here early in the game for Purdue. No defensive coordinator, defensive line coach Mark Hagan. Love of the effort from this group on third and short. Charlie Jones back to receive the Riley Thompson punt and a good boot from the Aussie sending Jones back to the 10 and he has stood up and around the 12 yard line good punt from Riley Thompson pinning Purdue deep on a 57 yard boot Boilermakers up by seven will have the ball when we come back Seven nothing Purdue midway through the first quarter. Let's set it downstairs and check it with Megan. Perhaps no one was more excited about Austin Burton's opening drive than fellow quarterback Aiden O'Connell. O'Connell looked like a nervous parent on the sideline watching their child. Anytime Burton made a great play, O'Connell had a massive smile. After the touchdown, Burton ran off the field. O'Connell gave him a massive hug, said, great job, A.B. 
Megan, thank you. O'Connell out tonight with an undisclosed injury. And that ball's on the ground, and it's loose near the end zone, still loose to the end zone. The pile builds, and it's recovered by the Owls. An incomplete forward pass is the ruling denying T.J. Young, who's back healthy tonight, a chance for the Owls to pull within one. Oh, my. Well, more games are lost than won, and Purdue fans know that all too well. There are two losses. You really feel that Purdue gave those ones away. My goodness, especially backed up in here. That is... Some, that's on the quarterback, though. You certainly can't afford that. And that was the right call. A pop pass forward. It was a gain of two. Let's go back to this play a moment ago, Jake. Yep, so you take the snap, and this is the advantage, I guess, in doing this. The timing just a little bit off, and that's what happens when you have a backup quarterback in there. But, you know, that's why you don't turn around and hand it off. That would be a fumble. But the fact that Burton caught the snap and tossed it forward. Now it's a forward pass, incomplete pass. Thanks to Deion Burks on the first down pop pass. So now a third down and eight. And inside their own 20 yard line, Burton time zips it across the 30 yard line. That's caught for a first down. By TJ Sheffield, a gain of 17. I'll tell you what, that's a big time throw on third and eight. FAU sitting in a zone. And Sheffield is running a corner route, just finding that pocket. Look at Burton, over one defender, between two defenders. He's playing really, really confident there in a critical situation. Tenth catch of the season for the redshirt junior from Thompson Station, Tennessee. Purdue so far, three of three on third down. Another quick hit. We've seen this play already tonight. It's Charlie Jones, and that ball's out. That's loose, and this one is going to be Owls football. Smoke Mungin knocked it free, then recovered it. FAU forces a turnover, and the Owls will have it. Well, and there is number two for the Owls, Romaine Smoke Mungin. Just as you exhale, you think, all right, we dodged a bullet. You give it right back to him. Smoke Mungin, the best cover corner on this FAU defense, and that time we call him a ball hawk. Charlie Jones just a little loose with it. You really got to tuck it, and he's cradling the ball too much. And Smoke Mungin says, I'll take those cookies, just like we were talking about. Strips the ball out and gives FAU a chance. Gosh, man, it's just it's frustrating. This Purdue team, so much talent. They've played so well for the majority of so many games, but at times there's been these massive mental lapses, and that's been what's cost them here early in the season. Once again, playing FAU, two fumbles realistically. One was bailed out on that drive. Third loss fumble for Purdue this year. Now Perry looking deep for Wester, and that's out of bounds. Now let's take a look at tonight's champion's mindset presented by Hampton by Hilton. Well, this Purdue defense is the biggest defensive front that FAU has seen all season. So what's the tempo? Or what's the what's the antidote? You use heavy tempo. Try to get these guys moving laterally, fast paced, try to wear them out. And for, 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 for Purdue, excuse me, as much as they like to pass it, you want to establish the run game for some balance. There's Perry on the rollout. That's deflected by Chris Jefferson. The fifth year senior, number 17, got his arms up and deflected that pass. It's third and long. Tell you what, he had Lejonte Wester here at the top right of your screen. You see him, he created some separation there on that out route. And Perry can just get the ball up over Jefferson. That should be an easy completion, but tell you what, Jefferson, they love to use him like a Swiss Army knife. Plays safety, plays that star position. He comes down in the box, he's all over the field. He's a D2 transfer, where he was a D2 All-American. He's really stepped up for this Purdue defense. Is this four down territory here for FAU on third and 10? Just me. Let's see what play call they go with. Set up the screen in traffic. That's Western. He is popped immediately by Jamari Brown. So FAU set up in great field position, but they've gone backwards by a yard. You know, if it is four down territory, you'd like to get a couple yards, get it to fourth and five, fourth and six at a minimum. But that time, Jamari Brown sniffed out the screen, got underneath the block, and made a nice tackle. Man, just FAU, not much going on offense here early in the game. Credit to Purdue's defensive front. It was Willie Taggart in his third year. Former head coach at Florida State and Oregon. 
Look at that play clock wind down. And there is the flag, and this will be a delay of game. Delay of game. Over. Offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. The dude declines that. Taggart his third season FAU wrapping up its last year as members of Conference USA. Next year they will join the American Athletic Conference. So Thompson boots it from his own 45. And Jones, fair catch at the 10. So Purdue's defense stands strong, makes a stop. Jones and the Boilermakers get it back by seven. Now Purdue's season this year, you go back to week one, Chris, Chris Jefferson, pick six, Purdue led by eight, this place was jumping, but then Sean Clifford found Kevon Lee late with 90 seconds to go, and Penn State won the game by four, 35-31 last week, it was penalties up by four, Payne Durham and Jeff Braun, both drawing on sportsmanlike conduct penalties, Syracuse had great field position, Garrett Schrader to a Rondé Gadsden for the game winning score with seven seconds to go, and with that, Purdue is one and two instead of possibly three and oh and now here is downing with a great run downing down the sideline he's out of bounds near the 40. charlie jones laid a great block to give downing a ton of space a 23-yard run well downing's had a couple really nice runs here to start the game you got your puller coming around Payne durham's getting in on the action charlie jones blocking downfield there you have i believe it's mershon rice blocking down the field that's a complete offense man one thing, you, you take an eight-yard run and it turns into a 20-yard run by having your receivers involved in the downfield blocking. That time, Jones and Mershon Rice, they were the difference there in letting Downing break it down the sideline. See how well Purdue is doing on the ground so far tonight. That's been an issue for a long time now here in West Lafayette. Here's Burton stepping up. Under pressure, keeping the play alive. Fires downfield incomplete, well contained by the Owls. Looking for Jones, they had two FAU defenders around. Well, next Saturday, we are all Big Ten all morning. Dave and the guys preview every conference matchup while Mike Paul and Brock Farine deliver all the fun from the Twin Cities. Big Ten tailgate presented by Range Rover Sport next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Nicole from Minneapolis next week. Kobe Lewis checks in a tailback for the first time. Here's Burton with an option. He'll keep it and lower the helmet out near the 40. We thought we might see Michael Limo here early in the game, but so far so good for Austin Burton. He's done a good job controlling the offense. Uh, the one issue there on the jet sweep with the snap control. But overall, you've got to say, Burton's doing a great job. He looks real comfortable back there. Made some nice throws, had some nice runs. See O'Connell and Alimo chatting there on the sideline. Purdue three of three on third down. The Owls bring pressure, quick throw towards the sideline, incomplete, intended for Payne Durham. Coverage from Dwight Toons. Fourth down. I think Burton's going to want to have that back. Payne Durham. Really, he had a beat, and on fourth and four, that's where you want to go to. Go to your tight end, get five yards, move the chains. That one just a little too outside. And Durham just couldn't come down with it. Four different receivers have caught a pass tonight, but nothing yet in the great tight end. The pain train. Gotta get the pain train going here. <laughs> Wrapping up a wonderful career. Jonte Wester. Back deep to receive this punt. Jack Ansel. And Wester with a return. Runs into his own man. That stops any momentum he had going. As he's tackled out to 24. Oh, ball, that ball come out. We'll sort it out, come back. Beautiful night in West Lafayette, Purdue by seven. Next Saturday, a football triple header kicks off with Illinois taking on Wisconsin. Then C.J. Stroud and number three Ohio State will take on Rutgers, followed by a primetime matchup between Indiana and Nebraska. It all starts with Big Ten tailgate next Saturday on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. You see Michael Alimo now taking some snaps. He has a helmet on. Austin Burton so far, Jake, three drives, but will number one come in next? We'll find out after FAU 
Starts this drive. That's a run for Zabiri Mobley. His first carry tonight. Retro freshman from Miami brought down by Branson Dean. Well, FAU really wants to get into tempo, but there's this delicate dance. You have to get some momentum. you got to get a first down before you really start firing. So I imagine if they move the chains here, their tempo is only going to increase on this drive. FAU so far 12 total yards of offense, and Mobley trying to change that and dives near the 35, and that'll be the first first down tonight for FAU. The strength really of this offense is their veteran offensive line. Their youngest guy is a redshirt sophomore, meaning three years playing at the college football level. So these guys have seen some things. Purdue's going to bring a lot of blitzes. They feel confident this line can hold up and answer the call. It's Mobley again, third straight carry, and flag comes in. As the ball comes out, they're blown dead to now a gain of two. Here Douglas made the stop. Our referee tonight is Mark Kozlinski. Defense number 58, 10-yard okay. penalty, automatic first down. This is this is a very unique call, holding defense number 58. So Branson Dean is on the inside there. They're trying to double team him up to the backer. While sometimes these D tackles, what they do is they grab the offensive linemen to prevent them from climbing to the second level. That time it's a great catch by the judge and he rightfully calls Branson Dean for holding. Near the 45-yard line. And the Owls will be back inside Boilermaker territory for the first time. They're in the cannon. But the carry that time picked up eight. Now we see the tempo, Jake. There it is. And no substitutions either, so you're preventing Purdue the opportunity to comfortably rotate in new defensive and fresh defensive linemen. There he threw that one into traffic, and that's caught by Wester. And he'll be brought, shoved out of bounds, about two yards shy of a first down. So far, everything has been about the line of scrimmage here for FAU. They haven't tested Purdue's defensive secondary downfield, but how about this? Look at this formation and look at Purdue's defense. Purdue is sitting there, as they always do, with one safety in the middle of the field. That means you have single coverage on those two receivers outside. And he'll be short. It was McCannon on the third down run. He was brought down by Samisi Fakasieki. Okay, battling an ankle injury throughout the year, but made a stop, so it's fourth and short. Fourth and short. You got the veteran offensive line of FAU, but what did Ron English say, man? He said he challenged these guys, man. Attitude and situations in the two minute, the end of game, and certainly fourth down and short is one of those situations. You've got to have a certain attitude that says, I'm drawing the line in the sand, and no matter what you do, I refuse to give it up. It's a boot for Perry. He'll throw to Wester incomplete. Oh, my. And there is a flag. Flag down inside the Purdue 30-yard line. You see the Purdue crowd. Murray Brown and the Purdue fans look concerned, and prior to the pass. Holding defense number seven, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. And Jamari Brown starting tonight. Reese Taylor out tonight with an injury. So Jamari Brown, transfer from Kentucky, flag on the fourth down play. They're running that deep out route right, right there again and again. LeJonte Wester beats Brown, and Brown just gets a little handsy there at the top of the route, grabbing the shoulder pads. And you know, that's probably the correct call, Corey. Heavily on this drive, Mobley back in a tailback. Severi Mobley spins across the 35, picked up about two, tackled by Chris Jefferson. About 65 seconds to go until the end of the quarter. Going back to that holding, whether you like it or not, Ron English challenges guys. Said, "Listen, this is the way the games are being called. You guys stop putting it in the hands of the refs. Just play good defense." That time. Is it? Is it enough? Is it not? Well, listen, the ref called a holding, and it certainly was enough to be called. You just can't do that. They're the second most penalized team of the Big Ten entering play this weekend. Here's an option run. And here's Perry with a first down burst inside the 20. Best-looking drive the Owls have had going all night long, and they move the chains. You can see the speed of Florida Atlantic here. This time it's a read option. You leave the dead of the defensive end, Kendra Jenkins, unblocked, and Nikozi Perry showing off the wheels. 
Start to 16. There's Mobley for about two. That may be the final play of the quarter. Right, though. Hey, listen, this FAU, they're getting a little momentum. They're starting to settle in. They're building a little bit of confidence. They're getting different guys involved. That's the end of the first quarter. The Owls, they have dropped seven straight against Big Ten teams. Willie Taggart's team is on the move. First quarter complete in West Lafayette. Purdue on top, 7-0. Welcome back to West Lafayette. This was Jeff Brom while we were away. Conversation, Jake, with Mark Luzinski and tonight's officiating crew. And pretty animated. Yeah, I understand the frustration, but I frankly agree with the officiating crew on both the calls on that drive. And, and once again, just don't put it in the hands of the officials. Just don't even give them the chance to call it. Saw how penalties crush produced chances to win last week up in Syracuse. Gain of six. Third down and short. Megan, what do you have? You mentioned those penalties. Jeff Brown made his whole team come in on Sunday and watch every single penalty from the first three games. He said he's trying to deliver a message. The room was dead silent during that time, but his team needs to be more disciplined offensively and defensively. Well stretched out that time by the Boilermakers. O.C. Brothers on the give to Johnny Ford. So it's fourth down and short. Decision time here for Willie Taggart and the Owls down seven on the road. But they are going to say, you know what? We'll take the offense away and send on our kicking team and try to get three here. Personal preference. Certainly a, a chance to go for it there on fourth and short with the way your offense is moving the ball. But... Can never knock a coach getting some points here on the road in an underdog situation. 26-yard try for Morgan Suarez, left-footed kicker, 4-5 on the year. And this one is good. Inside the left upright. So the Owls with a good drive. Perry and the Owls are on the board. 7-3 is our score, early second quarter. Across the Big Ten today, coaches are wearing the logo of Coach to Cure MD to raise awareness for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, the most prolific genetic killer affecting young men. Fans can learn more about this cause at CoachToCureMD.org. You can make a one-time donation of $25 on your next mobile phone bill by texting the word CURE to 501-501. The cause we are proud to be a part of all weekend long. Homecoming here in West Lafayette, 7-3 Purdue. Early on here in the second quarter. Charlie Jones and the Boilermakers will get the ball back. So how about this? Yards per attempt rushing, Purdue 10, FAU 4. Yards per attempt passing, Purdue 6.5, FAU 0.5. Third down conversions, Purdue is 3 of 4, FAU is 0 of 4. Yet the score is seven to three this has kind of been the identity you are what you put on tape Purdue has consistently outgained their opponents in terms of yards but it's been critical moments throughout the game that have cost them opportunities to win on a consistent basis there's Charlie Jones and he is walloped across the 20 yard line hit hard Jones, Jones a little slow to get up a turn of 16 one time Deerfield Warrior, and we have ourselves a new quarterback, Jake. So it was Burton in the first, and now the second quarter is going to bring out Michael Alonio. Well, I hate to say this too, but Charlie Jones, after that hit, he walked over to the sideline. He is not in the game. So Michael Alimo here on his first snap will be without with it without his best receiver on this specific play. Alimo third career game, redshirt sophomore from Montvale, New Jersey. He can throw it, and Alimo does into some traffic incomplete near the 45-yard line intended for T.J. Sheffield. But getting back to Charlie Jones, and he got hit hard in the first half up at Syracuse last week. He played the second half, but only on offense, did not return punts and kicks anymore the rest of that game. And we'll see if Jeff Brown does something comparable the rest of the game tonight. 
Talk about usage rates with running backs a lot. Like, hey, let's limit their carries to, to help keep them fresh throughout the season. Charlie Jones is averaging over 10 catches per game, over 15 targets a game. High usage rate. There's a line. Oh, he goes up high, and he took a hit. And out of bounds near the 30-yard line, but he pops right back up after a gain of six. White Tombs deliver the blow. Look at the hops. <laughs> Not the cleanest hurdle that time, but hey, still get to show off the hops. 6'4", 225. Alimo said he got to campus. He weighed about 230, but he said it was the wrong 230. He had to kind of train differently, reset his diet. 225. And third and short. Alimo pressured. Caught Durham well. Shot at the first down. Jaleel McCray among those that made the stop for the Owls. So Alimo his first series, and it's a three and out as the Owls will get the ball back down four. Well, what you don't want to do after FAU gets some momentum on offense is go three and out and give them the ball right back. But that's exactly what Purdue did here. Really nothing much going at all on that drive. I'd imagine going back to it, Austin Burton to me looked good. He looked in command of this game. I know it wasn't perfect. But he was making some quality throws. That time, Michael Alimo didn't get much going on the drive. Interested to see if they go back to number 12, Austin Burton, next time they get the football. And Jeff Brom told us yesterday that both will play. Another good punt from Ansel. No chance for Wester. This is going to bounce inside the 10 of beauty from Jack Ansel. Inside the 5. And number 30 fired up and for good reason. A 67-yard punt. The Aussie doing just fine in West Lafayette. Time now for Built for Success, brought to you by Rocket Mortgage. Jake, you see the numbers on Charlie Jones, how good he has been. Forget the Big Ten, but across the college football landscape this year. Correct. FBS ranks, not Big Ten ranks. First in receptions per game in the country, second in yards per game, tied for second in touchdowns. He's done it from the outside. He's done it from the slot. He's such a weapon, an integral part of this offense. But, you know, he had that fumble early in the game. You'd like to see him make up for that with a big try to put some points on the board for Purdue. Right now as the Owls pin back after a 67-yard punt. Here's McCannon. Not much. Maybe got one. Let's head back to Chicago. Time now for a T-Mobile studio update. Here's Dave Repson. Uh, Corey, Ohio State is absolutely hammering Wisconsin. Cage Stover already with two TDs. It's 21-0, and the Buckeyes are driving again. All right, Dave, thank you. Much closer game here tonight in West Lafayette. And second down and nine. Again, not much is happening for McCammon and his FAU ground game. No gain of the play. OC Brothers on the stop. Corey, I can't help but notice that Purdue is sitting comfortably in this cover one defense, meaning you have one safety sitting back there in the middle of the field. This puts a lot of stress and asks a lot of your corners and your nickelback. You're basically having to cover these guys one on one all game. FAU really hasn't tested them downfield hardly at all to start the game. You're wondering if they get to that at some point. So just one yard passing, and they're going to run it on third and nine. And McCammon fighting and spinning, and he'll have a first down near the 15. A gain of 10 for the junior from Hoover, Alabama. That's a heck of a ball play here. Probably had a chance to be stopped short, but just would not be denied spinning back for an extra four yards after contact. And now Tempo, and this is Perry. He'll keep it this time. He'll pick up maybe one. Kosi Perry, a sixth-year senior, second year with the Owls and Boca Raton. This is a great job by the freshman number five, Nick Carraway. They left him unblocked in a read option situation. He stayed home and made the open field tackle on the quarterback. I think they think number five is going to be a future star here at Purdue. Option toss. Here's McCannon. And he'll plunge forward across the 19 and the 20 and pick up four, setting up about a third and five. It's been McCannon. It's been 
Really the ground game so far tonight. The Owls, you saw the note, only one yard passing here tonight. They ran it on third and nine. We'll see what Willie Taggart does now on third and five. They haven't really even tried the downfield pass. Just a couple boots out to the right trying to hit some corner routes, but look at how low Purdue's defense is. Five receivers set. This one floated near the 40 and coming back and catching this one is Austin Evans. The fourth reception all year for the redshirt senior from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, a former walk-on, a gain of 23, first down FAU. He had the linebacker, number 20, OC Brothers, covering him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Again, there was zero safety help at all in the Purdue defense. Their deepest defender was six or seven yards field, one, downfield. Once again, you're asking a lot of your corners and your linebackers to cover these guys vertically. Now back to the ground. And it's Cannon. Gain of about three. So check it out. Look at that. There is zero depth at all downfield. So there you go. You got a matchup. Football is a game of matchups. You got your tight end on a linebacker. And that's an excellent throw off his back foot by Nikosi Perry, giving his tight end a shot. And a huge throw on third down to move the chains. And second and six time for Perry down the sideline. That's open. And that's caught by Wester. And that's a catch. So Wester down the sideline, shut down Here's by Jamari complete. Brown, and the Owls are on the move, first down. That's a rope. You see him pump fake there. They were trying, they run the screen so early and often in this game. That time Perry pump fakes the screen and hits his guy down the sideline. Put that one on a Petri dish for his receiver there. And now this offense is moving with tempo, and Perry's going to throw that late. And that's caught by Tony Johnson. And he'll pick up maybe about three. Chris Jefferson made the stop. It looked like Perry was going to run, but then at the last second did fire. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was a late, late throw. Is that option there? Does, does Perry have the option yeah, to tuck it in that case or still throw it? It comes from like the old Oregon offense where you're just you're trying to get the defense to commit to the quarterback run and then at the very last second you dump it out there. But for how much we've said about the secondary, that time they stayed disciplined. And, Made the tackle there for a minimal game. And Taggart coached Oregon for one season and 17. Perry up the middle for one. Kasiecki made the stop. Sixth year senior, it's third down and seven. On well, this third down al alone, FAU has converted twice, both their opportunities. They have been able to stay on the field. Now you're backed up in the red zone. It's early in this game, it's 7-3. to three. Teams are jarring for momentum. This is a huge down for FAU offense, for Purdue's defense. Out of the pistol on third down and seven. Play clock late. They get it off. It's an option toss. Here's McCammon trying to get the edge out near the 20. He's going to be out of bounds in about a yard and a half shy, maybe a yard of the first down. Fakasiecki again stretched that out. First down, the line to gain is the 18, and he is going to be shy of that. You might say, hey, why do you run it on third and seven? Well, you run it understanding we're going to go for it on fourth down. I think that's why you do that. Say, all right, hey, maybe we don't get it all, but we're going to get ourselves into a fourth and short situation. And at that point, we're going to keep our offense on the field. They are going to measure this. I am a little bit interested at this point in the game. Purdue, see it there just a bit short. We'll keep it on fourth down, but. Purdue is staying in one high man again. This, that's what cost him late against Syracuse last week Playing that man coverage it cost him against Penn State early in the season You've seen a couple defensive holdings a couple defensive penalties I'm a little bit surprised that FAU hasn't tried to challenge that look with some downfield passing attacks It's really just been some niche plays some some tight end throwbacks a, a fake screen and outside of that, it's been all run game, but Purdue 
They have their identity. It's aggressive. They're not afraid to put their guys on an island. At some point, if you're FAU, even if you want to run the ball, you have to test these defensive looks just to keep them honest. So Purdue has converted one fourth down already tonight. It's fourth and inches. Perry, 6'4", 198, has McCammon right behind him. It's Perry looking for a crease, and he'll have it. As Perry stretches out to the 17-yard line, that'll be an FAU first down. You move all of your defenders there between the two B-gaps. Perry says, all right, well, I'm not going to run into a wall. I'm actually going to dance this quarterback sneak all the way outside of my tackle. That's where the space is, so you, you commit so much to, to Keep your defensive lineman over the center. You expect the quarterback sneak. FAU runs it, but Perry, high IQ there, bouncing the quarterback sneak. Not something you see too often, but did just enough to move the chains. Here comes the 13th play of this drive. On first and 10 from the 17-yard line. It's McCannon. Across the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Again, a close to three. Fakasiecki. Along with Johnson combined on the stop. FAU 2-2 two and two on the year with wins over Charlotte and Southeastern Louisiana. Losses to Ohio and last week at home against UCF. First ever meeting between these two programs. On second down at seven, it's Perry in the pocket to the end zone. That is caught by Wester. Touchdown, FAU. And for the first time tonight, the Owls have the lead with 5.46 to go until halftime. A veteran offensive line. Jake gave Perry a pocket in time. Exactly. We've been calling for it all drive, Corey, saying, hey, Purdue is sitting in one high man. They, they are not respecting the FAU passing attack. At some point, you knew they had to make a throw downfield. That, that, that's really one of the first throws they've actually made plus five, ten yards downfield, and it was really a relatively easy completion. And Suarez boots through the extra point, and Lejante Wester with his fifth touchdown of the season. Here you go. Hitting his guy, Lejante Wester there in the end zone. A big, big touchdown to take the lead here. Up 10-7 here in the second quarter. Let's see if Purdue can answer. Well, for better or for worse, Purdue's defense loves to sit in this cover one look. You have your safety sitting about eight yards. There's no help for your secondary element. You're running a little wheel route there by the inside receiver, and then you're running a slant go that serves a pick. Look at that outside guy. That is a tough, tough ask for your slot nickelback on a slot receiver, LeJonte Webster. Again, when you sit in that one high defense, there's no way the safety can affect the play or help the underneath defenders. At some point, FAU was going to come to it and challenge them. That time they did, and it resulted in a touchdown. We saw a code DC, Ron English, and Tannick with him yesterday. He didn't hide his words. He said, we've been bad defensively in the second and fourth quarters. Nothing bad here about Deion Burks on the return. So Charlie Jones no longer returning. It's Deion Burks getting a chance and making something out of it. I asked coach yesterday, I said, hey, who's got, if you had one pick, who's got the breakaway speed out of this receiver group? Well, he said number four, Deion Burks. So Charlie Jones out, Deion Burks in. That time, that's just a track meet. He's running the 200-meter dash down the sideline. That is a huge, huge way to capture some momentum back in this game. And notice that. Look who's back in the game at quarterback. It's Austin Burton. So Michael Alimo, Alimo got one series, and now it's Burton. 8 of 11 passing, 52 yards, and a touchdown. I think you stick with Burton. You said it, 8 of 11. At this point, he's been the most comfortable guy. Late clock here, Jake. And they just got it off in time. And here is Downing trying the right side. Picks up a couple. Smoke Mungin made the stop. Again, a Purdue backfield missing. King Doru once again, sideline with a bad calf. But averaging 10 yards per carry, now down to about nine yards per carry after that run. So, you know, they're very pass happy, but their rushing attack has been a lot of seen a lot of success here early in the game. After a gain of two, 
Up the middle, it's downing again as the pile builds across the 50 down to the 48. Be third down and about three. Well, tomorrow, stream women's soccer live on the Big Ten Plus app as the Boilermakers face the Spartans. There's no place like home. Download the Big Ten Plus app and subscribe tonight. Third down and three. Jeff Brom and the Boilermakers to do three of five on third down. Burton will keep it himself, and that is well contained by the Owls, and he is short by about a yard. Eddie Williams, the Owls' leading tackler among those in on the stop, along with Morvin Joseph. So it's fourth and short. And we'll see if Purdue will go for it here, Jake. Down three. It looks like they will, and they're bringing in an extra lineman here. One thing to notice, Eric Miller is coming in. He's going to serve as a tight end. He's really a lineman. You're keeping... Payne Durham in, so you've got a little extra beef up front. And look at that. You got who do you see there? Number 63, Marcus and Bo. So you got two extra linemen and a tight end in. They load it up and try to find a hole for Downing, and he is going to be short. Eddie Williams and Smoke Munchen got through for the Owls, and Willie Taggart's team makes a big stop on fourth down. It'll be FAU football. No gain on the play, so with all those bodies coming in, Purdue still could not get that yard, and the Owls take over. That's a huge stop for Florida Atlantic's defense. Like you said, they got a couple extra linemen in, but in a critical situation, Florida Atlantic shows up and gets a stop, giving the ball back to their offense. Saturday, Illinois collides with Wisconsin. Then Heisman contender C.J. Stroud leads number three Ohio State against Rutgers. And Indiana battles Nebraska in primetime. A Big Ten football triple header. Next Saturday, only on Big Ten Network. Now coming up, stick around for the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups halftime show. First half analysis, Dave, Jerry, and Howard. Wisconsin Ohio State update and the Golden Gophers somebody during our production meeting last night was pretty pretty high on the Gophers and the guy to my right he may grab an oar he's, he's pretty fired <laughs> up right now and the Owls offense fired up as well another good play on first down across the 40 yard line it's Johnny Ford playing his second game of the season good play I'm gonna raise you one how about a great play that was just a little screen, but a lot of misdirection really confused the Purdue defense and what is really a six yard pass in air turned into a big game. And a 14 yard game. Here comes the tempo and now the Owls go back on the ground. A gain of six. Scotty Humpick made the stop. And Johnny Ford, number five for FAU. He was cleared to play his first game the day before last week's game due to personal reasons. Willie Tagger told us this week, certainly getting back in the mix in the game plan. And here comes Ford on cue, runs out of bounds inside the 30. And picks up another FAU first down, a seven-yard gain. Well, look at the Owls on offense, Jake. First two drives, but here, the last two, they have been moving the ball with relative ease, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. You know, football's a game of momentum, right? It's an object in motion remains in motion. You start to snowball down the hill. and. Florida Atlantic has really found their rhythm. They got Purdue completely on their heels right now. First down, it's McCannon. A couple. And for you is all three timeouts left. They get ball in half, too. So it's this delicate dance where, hey, let's control the clock. Right now you're in field goal position. So you say at the minimum we have three points. Can't have, can't have a turnover. Can't have a sack. But... Really, you want seven points and little time back for the Purdue offense, understanding you get the ball at half. This is a huge opportunity for Florida Atlantic to take complete control over this game. Second and seven, quick throw. LeJante Wester caught the touchdown earlier this quarter. Reception, and he's out of bounds near the 21 after a gain of three. Lock running a minute 55. Third down, upcoming. You know, I keep saying it, but there's one-on-one -on -one matchups all over this field for Florida Atlantic's receivers. Purdue is leaving their corners on an island. 
Here it is again. Wait till you see Purdue. Wait till you see this wide shot of Purdue. You got one safety in the middle of the field, and then everybody else is manned up in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Can they take advantage of it? See, Perry does that. Dan cannot connect inside the 15-yard line intended for Ford. So fourth down. So it'd be about a 38-yard field goal try for Suarez. Should they go that route? Clock stops. A minute 27 to go until halftime. But he had him. Yep. He had him. He had him by a mile, really, in this game of football. When you're separated by three or four yards, that's a wide open pass. Nikosi Perry, the veteran, would love to have that one back. But again, I just I think if you're Florida Atlantic, you say, hey, what is Purdue giving us? One on one matchups. You've got to challenge them downfield more consistently here in the second half. Especially a 39 yard try. High snap handled, and Suarez is good. Second field goal for the redshirt freshman Morgan Suarez. So the Owls add on and now lead 13 7. Purdue will get the ball back. Can they make a move late first half? But for now, Taggart of the Owls on the road lead by six. Purdue will have the ball down 13 7. Minute 23 to go. All three timeouts. For late second quarter. Again, Charlie Jones not back receiving kickoffs. Kobe Lewis is back. Number 25, Deion Burks, number four, had a great return last time. And this will be Burks again. Can he do it again? Here's Burks. And he leaves his feet. He goes high. And he stood up and tackled near the 25 yard line. A return of about 20. As we look at the second quarter numbers, it has been all FAU. Just 16 total yards of offense for the Boilermakers as Burton's coming back out. If you missed the news at the start tonight, Aiden O'Connell is out tonight with an undisclosed injury. And Jeff Brom told us yesterday both quarterbacks would play. It's been more Burton Jake than Michael Alimo. Alimo had one series. It's been pretty much number 12 tonight. On first down, and it's Durham. And Durham across the 30. As the clock is running, you thought that Durham should be in play here late first half. Tight ends, bigger target, wide catch radius. They run those favorable routes, six, seven yards. Just easy throws for your quarterback. Just a good target to get him back comfortable in this game. Step for Durham tonight after a gain of eight. This one towards the sideline. That is tiptoeing Maccabee. Yeah, the man that's known as crazy legs by his head coach, and those legs were rather crazy. Not his play there for a first down. Living into the nickname, right? These backs have caught the ball really well out of the backfield today. Corey, they made a couple plays. Sometimes those check downs, you know, they're not the sexy throw. They're not the 45-yard throw down that, that makes the highlight tape, but you just get it to your guy in space. He makes one guy miss, and all of a sudden you got eight, nine yards. Second reception for Maccabi, and now with 50 seconds timeout. to go, a timeout call. They're first to the half. This By is a 30-second timeout. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Final 50 seconds until halftime. Purdue so far 19 yards on this drive. All three timeouts down six. On first down. Wide open is Mockaby. Well-designed play, and Mockaby is shoved down near the 30. His third reception tonight is a big one, first down Purdue. Just before the break, we talked about how clean his hands have been today. He's been really involved in the passing game. Once again, maybe you don't expect a lot of your quarterback in his first start to throw the ball downfield, but he's comfortable certainly hitting the checkdowns out in the flat and letting your playmakers do the rest. Gain of 31. Here's Burton stepping up, pressured in trouble, and will let that one go out of bounds into the FAU bench, pressured from Jamie Petway. That one's not going to make the stat sheet, but that is a huge play, Corey. That one looked like a sack all the way. McConnell watching from the sideline, hoping Burton can lead the Boilermakers on a drive. Stick around for the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup halftime show with Dave and the guys here momentarily. Burton 11 of 15 passing. His first start with the Boilermakers' second career start. Before tonight, his last start, his only start, was with UCLA back in 2019. On second and 10. Over the middle, that's caught. And there's Charlie Jones. Haven't said his name in a while. 
Gain of 13, and now let's see if Purdue will use a timeout, and the Boilermakers will do just that. Purdue, their first of the half. It's a 30-second timeout. They'll take a break. Back in 30 seconds. Boilermakers on the move, down six. Two timeouts left, 32 seconds to go until halftime. Maccabee to Burton's left. And Burton surveys. Now rolls, looking. He'll throw that one to Jones, and that's a catch, and he's out of bounds. And that is going to be near the 12, a gain of two. One thing I noticed looking at these rosters, Payne Durham, 6'5", almost 260. The FAU secondary, 5'9", 5'10". 5'11", 5'11", 5'10", 6 foot. They don't have a lot of size, so down here in the red zone, size wins. It's a condensed field. You're not going to get a lot of separation. Sometimes you just want to throw it to a big body. Second down, Burton looking for the end zone, and it's bobbled and caught for a touchdown. Charlie Jones for the second time tonight. And Burns, mom and dad applauding the effort. Wonderful throw, phenomenal catch. <laughs> Steve and Jenny, mom and dad, on hand for their son's first start. In West Lafayette for Charlie Jones now. Two more touchdowns, seven on the year. Guy leading the Big Ten in reception yards, touchdowns, and receptions, period, adding to those gaudy numbers with a big first half tonight. Finneran to put Purdue back on top. And does just that. On this homecoming Saturday, and the Purdue student section, they were pretty quiet earlier this quarter, not anymore. Well, he got. And Jones. Once again tonight, and the Boilermakers have the lead. Back in 30 seconds. Well, Jeff Braun kept it pretty quiet who was going to start tonight. I'm sure mom and dad didn't know, right? I mean, I bet that their son had an inkling earlier in the week that he was probably going to start tonight. Is that fair to say? Mom and dad always have the inside scoop, right? <laughs> But I say a mother's intuition right. is never wrong. So even if it's not said, I'm sure they had a they had a hunch. So far, so good. They've got to be loving what they've seen from their son, especially on that big drive there, ending with a nice throw, nice touchdown to Charlie Jones. Seven play, 75-yard drive that took only 59 seconds. No return for Jay Sean Platt. And FAU, the Owls will get the ball first to begin the second half. O'Connell out tonight. Connell and Jones have become such a great pairing, but Burton doing a fine job finding number 15 as well tonight. Yeah, you know, there was a little bit of a quarterback battle going on as talking to Brom. Was it going to be Burton? Was it going to be a Limo? But I think so far, everything I've seen this first half, it's all number 12, Austin Burton. He's looked comfortable. He's made all the throws all over the field. I think I'll, I'll see him, you know, you'll see him throughout the second half. I think he's kind of taken command and separated a bit. It's a flag thrown well after the kick. Illegal uniform numbering. Two players wearing number 21. Receiving team. The penalty is declined. First down. Oh, double number. First penalty tonight on FAU. And the Taggart's Owls will have the ball first to begin the second half. Josie <laughs> Perry, 8 of 11, 82 yards. He's running for 20. Formation backfield. 
And this is Mobley. And he's tackled at the 29. It doesn't look like either side will burn a timeout, and that'll be the final play of this first half. We have ourselves a game. First ever meeting between the Boilermakers and the Owls, and behind a late second quarter touchdown drive, Purdue is on top by one. Austin Burton, two touchdown passes. Now let's head downstairs to Megan McEwen. Coach, you in that quarter with a touchdown drive. What are you seeing from Austin Burton in this first half? Well, I think he's playing hard, and uh, he's done some really good things for us. We just got to get back in the rhythm. We got to execute more, be way more consistent on offense and on defense. And we got to stop the run. We got plenty of guys in there to stop the run. We're not doing a very good job. Specifically, how do you stop the run adjustments you make at halftime? Well, we've got extra guys in there, so I guess we can add a couple blitzes here and there, but we need to be able to get off blocks, strike, and be able to make tackles when we have extra guys in the box. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. I beg it. Thank you. It's a Purdue defense once again missing its leader, Jalen Graham, still out with a fractured leg, hopefully a couple of weeks away from returning. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cup halftime show is coming up in just a bit. At the break, Purdue by one, 14-13. Football on the Big Ten Network is presented by Hampton by Hilton. Back here in West Lafayette at the half here on homecoming weekend. Purdue leading FAU by one, 14-13. Welcome back to ross Ain Stadium with Jake Butt. I'm Corey Provis. We'll check in with Megan McEwen in just a bit. Well, the first half, we thought we'd see both quarterbacks for Purdue. Jake, we did. But I think as the second half begins here, Purdue has probably settled up. There's an old saying, if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. And for Jeff Brom, in an ideal situation, you don't have a quarterback battle. You want one guy to separate. But you can only see so, mu so much in practice. you got to see it in a game where there's a chance of being hit, a chance of being sacked. It's unscripted. And I think what you saw in that first half was that separation that Jeff Brom was looking for. I'd imagine here going forward, this is Burton's job to lose. And if O'Connell's out for an extended period of time, they're going to rely on Burton, Burton beyond this game. So you look at the numbers, he's had a great half. 14 of 18, 127 yards. He's been extremely efficient. But I also look, too, for something that goes beyond the numbers, a certain energy that they carry. And for me, number 12, Austin Burton, he has looked extremely comfortable there in the pocket. Six years in, six years in college football, three years here in Purdue. Veteran is the word that continued to come up for him. And so far, he put out a really clean first half. And they'll need more of it because they're in a dogfight here with FAU. And the Owls will have the ball first to begin the second half. As that one sails through the end zone, and the Owls will have it from the 25-yard line. Let's set it down to the field. Here's Megan. I spoke to FAU head coach Willie Taggart. He said he was really happy with his running game in the first half, as he should be. His team rushed for 106 yards. He says his backs were doing a great job, as was the old line. They need to keep that up in this second half. Defensively, he says they need to make sure they do a better job reading the passing from Purdue. He wants to make sure they have more players in coverage if the pass play is happening. Hi, right, Megan. Thank you. Willie Taggart, his third season. Owls have dropped seven straight games against the Big Ten. Last time, FAU beat a Big Ten foe 2007 against Minnesota. Here's Perry on an option. He'll keep it. And he takes a hit in 30, but still picks up an additional two a gain of seven. Cam Allen, having called his name much tonight, made the stop. Nice play by the offense. Nice hit by Cam Allen. And we're back, folks, coming out of the second half. Football is here. As we said, right before halftime, this Purdue defense is missing its leader once again. Jalen Graham is out. Still recovering from the fractured leg that he suffered against Penn State. And the opener, still a week or two away. Third down at about three. Perry. And... Here's the FAU offensive coordinator, Brent Deerman, in his first year came to FAU from Middle Tennessee State. He said this week that if we don't run the football, my dad won't talk to me. <laughs> his dad, Roger, legendary offensive line coach in Alabama for more than 40 years. He's watching tonight near Mobile. If we don't run, dad is mad. On 
Third down. Incomplete. Intended for Wester. And FAU three and out on its first drive here in the second half. Jamari Brown of the Boilermakers make a stop. And Purdue will get the ball. And Charlie Jones caught touchdown right before halftime. He is back to receive this punt. Riley Thompson, impressive first half. Both punters performed well in the first half. And here's Jones now looking for some space. Great cut. Charlie Jones, here we go. He's got friends in front, and Jones out of bounds across the 45-yard line. There are two flags on the field near the Purdue 34 and 35-yard lines. So we'll see if this is coming back. It's right around the line of scrimmage, so this really could go either way. Is it a holding by the punt team in protection? Is it a holding by the receiving team as FAU's trying to release? Oh, wow. Those are both on Purdue. Including a personal foul. And so. that, and that crushed what you just said. That is what crushed Purdue's hopes of winning last week at Syracuse. Personal fouls on sportsmanlike conduct penalties, and that reaction from Jeff Brom saw that often late in the fourth quarter in Syracuse last week. This is taking a long time here, and the fans here on this homecoming night growing restless. Jeff Brom, he says, what do we got? Reading his lips. Well, last week, Penn State, last season, when they've lost games, they've nearly doubled their output in penalties in their penalty yards and it's no mistake that that leads to less a lesser percentage of winning and again you know penalties are something within your control it's it's disciplined football and at some point i don't even know if this can come from the coaching staff this has to come from within the locker room some veteran guy has to step up and say guys enough is enough we cannot continue to get penalized at this rate there are two fouls on the play Personal foul, continuing to participate without a helmet. Kicking team, that penalty is declined. Holding, during the return, return team, that 10 yard penalty is enforced at the end of the run. It'll be first down. So one penalty on each side. So Purdue will have the ball, and here comes Austin Burton. Third year in the program, sixth year senior out of Newton, Massachusetts. And even with the penalty, Purdue will have the ball in outstanding field position. You know what we haven't seen much of today that FAU was aware of and that talking to the players is a big part of this Purdue offense is some trick plays. Payne Durham said they, they work about 30 on any given week and all those plays are up regardless of wh whether O'Connell is going to be able to play. Let's see if they get to some of these here in the second half. Tracy in motion. That's a run for Downing and Downing. Nice hole. Still fighting and Downing still not down. Then he's finally planted hard by Mormon Joseph, but a strong run there for Downing, a gain of eight. And there's an injured Owl down to the field at the 45. He's looked great. He's had a couple great runs today, but excellent balance. He's a thicker back where when you try to wrap him up, it's hard to bring him down. You almost need to phone a friend. One guy not enough. Downing, great first half and great start here to the second half. Can't yet make out the FAU player. But getting back to Downing, and now we do see that's, that's Eddie Williams. So we'll take a break, come back, sort this out, and we come back.
You now some key guys are out tonight for Purdue. We've mentioned O'Connell, but he has company on offense. King Dover out again tonight, as is wideout Brock Thompson. Offensive lineman, right tackle Cam Craig, unable to go defensively, still missing their leader, Jalen Graham, and also Reese Taylor, unavailable tonight in the secondary. Eddie Williams, by the way, did jog off okay, so he should be able to return here momentarily for FAU. As Downing has stood up. And now flags come in late. No gain on the play, but we have flags, multiple flags all over the field. After the play was over, Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 31, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's uh, Dwight Toombs, what a key pick last week against UCF. That's number 31's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Throwing down, downing. After the whistles blew. And for once, Purdue is on the right side of a penalty, huh? It's been a while since they've had that. Certainly no arguing that one. The whistle's clearly blown. Not really a smart penalty at all by FAU. You had, you had Purdue backed up in a third down situation there. and Not only give him the first down, but 15 yards. So Devin Mockaby now in a tailback. On first down from inside the FAU 30-yard line. Pressure coming from the right side as Burton finds Maccabee, splits away once, and now will be tackled near the 20. There is a flag, two flags thrown back at the 40. Oh, Burton is hit late. Personal foul, yeah. roughing the passer. Defense number two, will penalize half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Smoke Munchen, he was coming on a cornerback blitz, number two to Burton's right. Well, if there's one thing you're learning in this game is the value of playing disciplined football. How much penalties, especially personal fouls, where they're an automatic first down and they're 15 yards, how much that can hurt your team. We've seen it hurt Purdue early in the first half. Now here, early in the second half, we've seen it hurt FAU. And the Owls in the first half, Jake, penalty-free football, but on this drive, already 30 yards of penalties. So now first and goal as Burton finds Tracy looking for a cutback lane and it's not there. Luzi yard stretched out well by Jaleel McRae. They tried to bring Sheffield in motion to mimic a jet sweep, but if you saw it there, there was a little miscommunication. Sheffield was not on the same page, so they didn't get that play action. And what that did is Florida Atlantic was able to sniff out the swing route. So they had they had hats on the football. Great pursuit. I think you saw five or six Florida Atlantic defenders there wrapping up Tyrone Tracy in the backfield. Downing in motion on second and goal. It's going to be burned a design run. And he takes a loss. Back to the 14. So after a loss of one, now four more on the negative side. Jones and Hawthorne got home. Yep, it's a design run. They had a little bit of success with that there in the first half, but Florida Atlantic is running a little game, a little twist where you take your inside guy and he start, starts upfield, stunts to the outside. Your defensive end starts outside and stunts back inside, confuse the Purdue offensive line, and really nowhere to go for Austin Burton there on the run. Burton's needed to make a big throw. He's gone to number 15. Jones lined up top of your screen. On third and goal, it's over the middle, looking for Durham into traffic, and that is a flag, and it's an incomplete pass. Armani Eli Adams came up with the ball in traffic, flag thrown back of the end zone. Intended for Durham, and he had blue, white, and red jerseys all around him. Pass interference, defense number three, the foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First thing all. Another FAU penalty, and this one is on Williams. So it's a hard ask. You're asking your guy to run down with one of the better tight ends in the conference. That time, Eddie Williams just wasn't up for the challenge, and, you know, clearly, clearly a pass interference. Runs him out of the back of the end zone. Got his head around very, very late, too. Yep. 
So now first and goal. Now you got to take advantage of this field position in these penalties if you're Purdue. It's Downing up the middle. Downing driving for the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Purdue. Right on cue. Downing's second rushing score this year. And Purdue ups the lead to seven. If you're Florida Atlantic, you got to be kicking yourself. A couple times you have a chance to get off the field in third down situations, and a couple times you bail out Purdue with critical penalties. You can a cat has nine lives, right? And Purdue that time took advantage of it and ended that drive with the touchdown. A lot of it assisted by penalties by the Florida Atlantic defense. Aaron's extra point is good. Another flag, by the way. <laughs> My goodness. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number two. That 15 yard on, penalty boy. will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. Really Time Taggart's out. team, they're coming unglued here early on in this third quarter. A one possession game, but Dylan Downing down 17 pounds from the bowl game. He said, no more red meat and no more Panda Express. Too much orange chicken, too much fried rice. Looking slim, looking good. Purdue by eight. Football on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance, Simple Human Sense, and by Discover, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. Homecoming weekend, Purdue Pete has changed over the years. And how about that look tonight? The 100th homecoming. Seen advertising for the school bookstore back in the 40s. They've been in the football field in 1956. Cool logo tonight here on homecoming. And Purdue leads by eight. There we go. We've got multiple Pete's. You have a favorite? Pistol Pete? Yeah. It was Austin Burton. Connell to his left out tonight. With an undisclosed injury, Michael Alimo had one series. It has been all Burton. The bulk of this game tonight, and Purdue now leads by eight. Drive here, don't you think, for FAU? Gains some momentum, some composure back here after an ugly series defensively. A strong start defensively for Purdue as Lawrence Johnson stopping McCammon. No gain on the play. Before half, Jeff Brom said, hey, we got to stop the run, and we're committing guys to the box. Again, what we highlighted so much in the first half is a one-high defense. Well, if you have one safety in the back end, what's that tell you? That means there's one extra guy in the box to stop the run. When it's too high, you're committed to stopping the pass. So at some point, FAU, you're going to have to challenge Florida, or you're going to have to challenge Purdue vertically. Try to do that here, and the pile builds up to the 30-yard line. Tony Johnson made the catch, a gain of close to five. Cam Allen, there's Jack Sullivan, number 99. If you have a two-high safety look, that means you have two extra guys in the back end. That's less guys in the box. Usually that says we're going to try to run the ball. When it's a one-high safety look, one of those extra safeties in the box to stop the run, so you would say we got to try to pass the ball. FAU two out of nine on third down. This one too high, incomplete. Poorly thrown to Johnny Ford. Same throw he missed on that two-minute drive before half. This time to the left side of the field. He missed it on the right side going into half. That one came out with some zip. Ideally, you, you throw a more catchable ball for your backfield, for, for your running backs. Johnny Ford couldn't come down with it. Willie Taggart, former quarterback during his playing days. Talking to the veteran. Perry, another three and out. Charlie Jones, great return last time. Low punt. On a bounce. And Jones is bottled up across the 30-yard line. So Purdue up by eight. Offense back on the field. We'll take a timeout.
Be sure to join us tomorrow for a sensational top 10 volleyball matchup coming your way as the defending national champion Badgers take on Minnesota. Coverage begins tomorrow at 8 Eastern, powered by Unleaded 88, only on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Flex grabs future volleyball player right there. Purdue going with an extra lineman there. That's 74 Eric Miller in at the right tight end position to start the drive. There's Devin Mockaby and right on cue, Jake with that added strength and bulk on the line. Mockaby picks up seven. That's why you bring in the extra, the extra weight. Bring in a 300 pounder. Run right behind him. And crazy legs, Devin Mockaby just chipping away. His running back coach called him a wet bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> that truly paints the picture for the, how this guy is as a runner, huh? Slippery. Berkeley, the running back's coach, will try to slip for a first down and does. Great cutback, and Mockaby still going. Hard run across midfield to the 49th first down, Purdue. You know, Devin Mockaby from Boonville, Indiana, about 20 miles east of Evansville. He committed to Navy and then flipped to Purdue as a walkout in June of 2021. Put up great numbers in high school. Jeff Brom saw a little video of him, but just wasn't sure, wasn't sold in the competition he was facing. But boy, what a treat this has been for a guy whose dream was to play here and to be a Boilermaker, and he is making the most of this opportunity. Flag thrown as Burton throws wide open Payne Durham. And Durham keeps his feet and hurdles out of bounds near the 23. The flag at the 30 and a flag back at the Purdue 45 for now a gain of 26, but we'll see. They're trying to get the pain train rolling, baby. They might have a flag. There are two fouls on the play. Holding offense number 63. Holding defense number four. The penalty's offset. Repeat, repeat second down. TJ Young, Correction, FAU, first down. and Marcus Bow for Purdue. So those offset. The ball back at the 49 yard line. Didn't count, but it was a beautiful concept. You come out on this drive, emphasizing the run. You get a couple great runs with Maccabee, and then you go to the play action. You go to your big fella, the pain train, number 87, Payne Durham. But it didn't count. It's carry for Kobe Lewis tonight. And Lewis picks it up about four, tackled by Petway. Kobe Lewis, redshirt junior, transfer from Central Michigan. Did not play last year due to an injury. Megan, what do you have? Well, just down here a moment ago, Payne Durham went up to Austin Burton and said, hey, I've got an advantage. Get me the ball. And that's exactly what you saw there on this drive. Burton's looking for the pain train, as Jake Butt has just named Payne Durham. Thank you, Megan. 13 catches for Burton, for uh, Durham, rather, entering play tonight. That was tops among all Big Ten tight ends. And there's another nice run, first down run for Kobe Lewis. Lewis 5'11", 220, redshirt junior, picked up eight more. I'll tell you what, they've come to the run quite a bit this game, and they've had a lot of success. That's Lewis again. Cutting it outside, now makes a good move inside the 35. And picks up about six. Jake talking about the Purdue ground game tonight. It has not been a strength. For this Boilermaker team. Now, to be fair, this is a pass first heavy offense, but already seven rushing touchdowns this season, seven total all of last year. Yeah, I mean, you can be a passing team, but you have to run it enough just to keep the defense honest. Establishing a rushing game will help your passing game. Burton from behind, pressure coming, and he could sense that time was running out, and then at the last moment did throw that ball wisely out of bounds. Again, like that, that play isn't making the highlight sheet. I mean, it'll make the stat sheet as an incompletion, but 
sometimes avoiding a negative play is as valuable as trying to find a positive play. And you're right, that pass rush was coming from his blind side. Again, a feel thing. That's a great job by Burton because now you're in third and four. You take the sack and you're in third and ten. Connell out tonight due to an undisclosed injury. Watching on here. On third down and four. Burton time and it's intercepted. Picked off by Toombs. His second straight pick on back to back Saturdays. And on third down, Burton picked off by Toombs. And the Owls make a play on defense. I'll tell you what, Austin Burton, and he just stared down that slant. And number 31, Dwight Toom. Toombs, he read his eyes like a children's book. Look at this, look at him trigger on that. Great hands, great catch. But it was a telegraph throw by number 12, Austin Burton. Here it is, here's a better look at it. He's just staring it down. You know all day he wants to come to that slant. And Dwight Toombs, once again, read him like a book. Like, let's watch his eyes. Look at 12's eyes. Where is he throwing? He's going there the whole time. He wants to get it to the slant. And as a safety, you've got to read the quarterback's eyes. And then you got to make the play. And that's a great play, a huge play by Dwight Toombs. Back-to-back so -back games, the pick for Dwight Toombs. With about 6.05 to go in the third quarter, a gain of about two for Larry McCammon. And now it's about this FAU offense, Jake. Third drive here yeah. of the second half at two, three and out so far. I'm up here just flowing. It's back and forth, and someone's got to take command here of this game. And Perry looking deep, has a man wide open. That's caught by Burton. And Jaquan Burton beautifully thrown by Perry, and there's the big play that FAU had not had this entire half. I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. Purdue is sitting in cover one man. If you're Florida Atlantic, you have to attack vertically. Vertically, That is a great scheme because you've come to these underneath little screens throughout the second half, just a dump down to your receiver. That time, Nikosi Perry, he pump bakes to the screen, takes advantage of the one high man, and delivers a dime down the sideline. 43 yards in stride, Perry to Burton. And on first down, Perry throws up and incomplete. Jamal Edrin haven't called his name much tonight. And Corey Trice to get in there to knock that ball free. So let's go back to it here. Right, you've come to the screen all day. You see the pump fake, and then look at the separation. It's going to come on your screen here. Look at that. That's five, six yards of separation. That is a scheme thing. But again, why is there no help? Well, because Purdue is sitting in cover one man. There is not a cover two safety that can get over there and affect that play. Purdue is committing more guys into the box to stop the run. And that time, it bit him in the butt. Longest play from scrimmage, but now it's an option toss. And good hit there from OC Brothers, lowering that shoulder on McCammon. Third and long. The Auburn transfer, right? Certain hits you can feel. Look at this, running full speed and whoa. Delivers a nice lick. Yeah, go celebrate with his teammates. And that's a big play because you put FAU after their own big play, you put them back against the wall in third and ten. You got them back on their heels. And they're sitting in cover. You see the two safeties here by Purdue. So you do see the adjustment. They're committing more guys to the back end. Over the middle into the end zone. Touchdown. Lajante Wester for the second time tonight. Right between those two safeties. And FAU is a two-point conversion away from tying this game up. And it looks like they're going to kick it and settle for the extra point try. I'll tell you, I get it. I understand you want to run the ball. But the weakness of this Purdue defense has been the pass defense. That time they're in split safety. Okay, so you have more in the back end, but there's a hole in the middle of the defense. When you go split safety, the weak point is in between those two guys. That's just a post and an accurate throw by Nikosi Perry. I'll tell you what, we got a ball game on hands here. One after try is good for Suarez to make this a one-point game. Perry had a couple of bad drives, but not there. Accurate strike. How about it going back to your guy, LeJonte Wester? Here it is. Look at the space there in the middle of defense. Delivers it with some zip. Give it to number one, LeJonte. 
Next Saturday, it is a can't miss triple header. Illinois takes on Wisconsin. CJ Stroud then leads number three Ohio State against Rutgers. And Indiana will take on Nebraska. It's all next Saturday on Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Lejante Wester, two touchdown receptions tonight. And he is all fired up as FAU is looking for the upset on the road. Owls have not defeated the Big Ten team since 2007. They've lost seven straight Big Ten matchups. So Charlie Jones returning punts, not kicks. This is Deion Burks' his third return. And Burks is brought down near the 30. about a 20-yard return, and he needs some help up to his feet. And here comes Austin Burton coming off the pick. We'll see how he responds, making his first start. Had such a good, clean first half. You know, we were talking about it coming out, but, you know, that drive ended with a really bad, a telegraphed interception. He stared his guy down. So, hey, you know, we don't know about you until you are faced with some adversity. Let's see how you respond. Certainly the body of work says Burton's been playing a quality game. Here's a run for Downing. He'll pick up close to four, maybe five. So we thought FAU was the running team. They're averaging 3.7 yards per carry rate right now. Purdue, on the other hand, the not running team is averaging six yards a carry. On the flip side, the passing team, Purdue, only eight yards per completion. Whereas the running team, FAU, averaging 13 yards per completion. The tables have turned. Second down and five. It's Downing again. Big hole. Downing makes a cut. First down near midfield. FAU can't stop the run right now. So Jeff Brom, they're keeping the ball on the ground as Downing picks up 11 more. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Downing has had so much success tonight. He's done it on the edge. That time down the middle of the defense. He's not only breaking off four or five yard runs. He's breaking off these big chunk 15, 20 yard carries. He's looked great. Maccabi has come in there. Kobe Lewis has done good. I know you want to pass the ball, but right now this rushing game has got a lot of momentum. And they stick with it. And Downing. Run down from behind by Jacob Merrifield. Richard Freshman. Georgia. And Downing will come out, get a breather, a solid series. The beautiful thing, too, though, is, is especially with a new quarterback, you know, Aiden O'Connell's out, you establish a run game and then play action pass. I was just going to ask you, rate. I was yeah. just going to ask you, at what point does this open up a play action pass opportunity? Well, they had one to Payne Durham that got called back, remember? And they've, they've had some success. This one's off the play action pass. Double move to Charlie Jones. Looking deep, looking for Jones, and this one knocked away. Justin McKiffin step for step with Charlie Jones. Great coverage, not a bad throw from Burton, but really good coverage from number 11. You said it, great coverage from number 11, Justin McKiffin. You see the double move. They run the out route a couple times, but he didn't bite. And he's running hip to hip. He gets his eyes around. I mean, that's just textbook. That's great defensive back play. It's a hard position, man. You're out there on an island. You're playing arguably one of the better receivers in the entire country right now. Running a double move with no help. It's Todd Orlando, defensive coordinator, first year, former Wisconsin Badger. Tense. Look at that. The linebacker on the Big Ten championship team in 1994. Burton throws, and there's Durham. And Durham with the catch. About two yards shy of the first down. Eddie Williams was with Durham. The old Jason Witt route, wide range. You push up, you stem inside, you got a linebacker on you. It's fourth and two. Jeff Brown looks like he'll keep the offense on the field. The way that Purdue has been running the ball here, could you completely rule out a run here? Certainly not. And even Austin Burton, he's done it with his feet a couple times throughout the game. So, see Purdue all one on fourth down tonight. Mock could be the tailback. It's going to be a pass. It's Burton now may run. Looking for a pocket, will float this one, and that's caught inside the 40. There is a flag thrown, caught by Tracy. There's a flag at the 35-yard line for now a gain of three, and a Purdue first down pending the call.
prior to the pass. Holding, defense number four. Ten yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, that victimized FAU on the last or two Purdue drives ago, the amount of third down, first down conversion penalties, and now it happens on fourth down. 49 of penalty yards this half alone for FAU. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a heck of a, <laughs> heck of a play by Burton. I mean, he steps up in the pocket. There's really nothing there. Tracy really isn't even open. Off-balance throw. FAU happy to get T.J. Young back tonight. Richard Jr., but a crucial penalty there. And now it's Lewis with the run. Hard earned about eh, three or four. Kobe Lewis brought down by the curious offer. With 20 to go in the third. They do led by one at halftime. And the Boilermakers lead by one with 70 seconds to go in the third quarter. Penalties have absolutely killed Florida Atlantic's defense here in the second half. Five for 49 this half. Burton in trouble, and he's wrapped up and sacked at the 35-yard line. Latrell Jean with his second sack of the year. That looks like a screen play here on the top of your screen. Look at it right there to Charlie Johnson. Okay, all right. So you saw 51, Courtney McBride, he kind of sniffed out the screen and he stepped right in the throwing lane of Austin Burton. So he didn't have the comfortable or comfortability, excuse me, to throw the screen to Jones. So that's a great job by number 51, Courtney uh, McBride, the field linebacker. Sack tonight, two offensive lines on both sides, but don't give up too many. On third down at 13, over the middle, and that's caught inside the 30-yard line by Tracy. Well shy of the line to gain clock running and that'll do it for quarter number three Here in West Lafayette so as we move to the fourth quarter we have ourselves a game Big Ten Conference USA homecoming night Purdue by one a Little shout from the student body here and more than 50,000 on hand here for homecoming night in West Lafayette, a beautiful, beautiful late September evening here at Ross Age Stadium. As we start the fourth, Purdue and Mitchell Finneran will line up for a 47 yard try, his longest this season, 41, career long 50 from last year. The second year with Purdue, began his college career at Sanford. From 47. That's on the way to the right, trying to hook back and no. It was tipped by Eddie Williams. And Willie Taggart's team to start the fourth makes a play on special teams. Down one. They yeah, just missed it. Just flat out missed it. Jack Albers hold and Finner and he knew it. Meanwhile, Taggart's reaction. Waving that off from the get-go and the energy is noticeable. On the sideline. Finner and second miss this year. And now Zuberi Mobley is the tailback to Nikosi Perry's left. And Perry's going to keep this one, and he has a ton of space out of bounds. First down across the 40. Uh, Purdue, they bought the fake to Mobley, and Perry kept that, Jake, and a gain of 14. It's a read option, so they're leaving that defensive end unblocked. And if he plays the running back like he did there, Perry knows to pull it. And that time, no one out in space. The Purdue defense, and they're back to it again. Keeps it again, and Perry. Cuts back once, twice, and now loses his footing at the 35-yard line. Boy, the coaches told us this week he can run, but ideally we don't want him to. Right, right. Because he's got a big arm. They trust his arm, but I'll tell you what, he's done it on his feet a couple times today and back-to-back -to -back times here on the drive, proving that he certainly is serviceable when he does pull those read options. 
Perfect. Uh, 21 more on the ground. You see the night for Perry in the air and on the ground. And now he will throw. Time. Rolling, throwing, and too far for Burton. Second down. There's probably been three or four throws specifically rolling to his right and specifically on the FAU sideline there on the far side of the field. That Perry has been off by about a yard or two. He's been playing a, a relatively clean game, a solid game. But if he can turn a couple of those plays that time, he had Burton with separation really had him open. If he could turn some of those into completions, this game looks a little bit different. Now even the yardage is tonight on all sides. Perry looking for a deep shot, and that is caught by Wester. LaJonte well, Wester having a big game here on the road tonight, 27 more. You saw it there. Purdue was trying to bring the blitz, but this veteran FAU offensive line gave their guy, Nikozi Perry, just enough time for him to throw out there and deliver a strike. Here's Wester trying to get a block and does. Wester is forced out near the five. Jaquan Burton with a good block, and then Cam Allen with a touchdown saving play defensively. Now the tempo, Jake, here they go. Right. We got to draw a line in the sand at some point if you're Purdue. Ron English said, hey, man, fourth quarter defense has been our kryptonite. If you can't pick up a first down, by the way, this is second down and four. And here's Johnny Ford. And he stood up about a yard shy of the line to gain. It'll be third down and about one, tackled by Scotty Humping. And a lot of pushing and shoving after the play. See Ford on the ground, helped up by Edrick. Ford after the play was over. Samisi Fakasiecki, he wanted the ball. Johnny Ford wanted the ball. Kick to the helmet. We play on. On third and one. It's Mobley to the right side, and Mobley's going to have a first down. Chris Jefferson met him at the point of contact, but Mobley kept moving that body. First and goal, FAU. Must leave the game for one down. First and goal. The new fans quiet. Some stunned right now. A lot of time left here in the fourth quarter. Purdue one and two on the year. Final non-conference game of the season tonight. Conference play picks back up next week on the road against the Gophers. On first and goal. Nothing there for Mobley. Kadron Jenkins with a big tackle and a loss of one. you're going to see down here is Purdue is over committing to stopping the run. FAU simply doesn't have enough guys to block how many Purdue defenders they're seeing in the box. And once again, what that really means is you're going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups out on the edge. Look at that box there by the Purdue defense and look at your matchups up top with the FAU receivers. Uh, second and goal. Perry rolling. Stutters now floats to the end zone, going up, catching that with a foot down. Yes, touchdown, Jaquan Burton. There's a flag back at the goal line on the near side of the field. For now, a five-point owl lead, but a big call coming up from Mark Kluzinski. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Offense number 43. 15-yard penalty. Repeat second down. All right, Jake, what happened here? So this is a new rule. You are only allowed to cut block within the tackle box. The tackle box is defined by the outside arm of either of your tackles, and that extends one yard down the field. So you're going to see the cut block coming. There's the tackle box. It's defined. 
and then the cut block right there by your right tackle. It's way too far outside of that box and way too long after the snap. Watch the right, I think that's actually the right tight end there at the very number 69 right there, and he dives and cuts. You cannot cut block outside of the tackle box that time. That's clear as day. That's a new rule that was put in this offseason to try to protect the players. And look at this. It pushes the ball all the way back to the 18-yard line and denies the Owls the lead for now. Perry trying to get some of that back, and that's incomplete. Knocked away by Jamari Brown. Intended for Jamal Edrin. Third and goal. Great play by Brown. They're running a post route, the same route they scored on just a couple drives ago. That time, clean defense, right? No pen, no holding, no defensive pass interfering. He pass interference. He waits for the ball to get there. That's what you need. I mean, listen, we've seen it here on third downs. Both teams have bailed each other out with penalties. Florida Atlantic, your percentage of converting this is so low. The only thing that could really kill you is a penalty if you're the Purdue defense. So, no holding, no DPI. On third and goal, Perry hit into traffic, deflected and intercepted. Here comes Jefferson again. Jefferson did this against Penn State. Jefferson still up and wrapped up in the 35-yard line. The 16th career pick for the fifth-year senior, Chris Jefferson, second this year. Chris Jefferson, the D2 All-American. He transfers into Purdue. They didn't know how big of a piece he would be of this defense, but he's been a huge piece of the Purdue defense to start the season. He had a pick six earlier against Penn State in the season. This time, backed up. Critical, critical moment. Tonight's mayhem moment is brought to you by Allstate. So think about the sequence here. For a moment, it looked like FAU took the lead, but then the penalty pushed them back, and on third down, in the coverage and Purdue with the ball, the lead following Jefferson's second interception this season. And now it's Mockaby with a flag thrown. He's upended at around the 32. Holding on Purdue. Holding. Offense number 63. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's Marcus Bow. Make sure make that retro freshman from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. You never want a holding penalty, but especially after a huge, all, you just heard it, All-State mayhem moment. It's a massive momentum swing. Chris Jefferson makes a huge play. He gets you down in plus territory, a chance to take real command of this game in the fourth quarter, and then what has killed Purdue all season? A penalty. Now it's first and 20. You're greatly behind the sticks. Fourth penalty tonight, second this half. It's on first and 20. Burton and not on the same page there with Tyrone Tracy Jr. Just throwing a little in front of uh, Tracy. Let's go back, Jake, a moment ago. Once again, look at the eyes of Nikosi Perry. He's staring down that stick route all day. That's an easy read for the defense. Actually, Jacob Wahlberg got a hand on that. He was the one that initially broke up the pass, and it fell right into the hands of Chris Jefferson, who picked it off and did the rest. He's been a huge piece of that defense. He's like a Swiss Army knife. Plays all over the field. He's made some big plays and big moments. He transferred in from a D2 school. I didn't know how big of a piece he would, would be. Finley, Ohio. But a big piece indeed. And Burton. He's out of bounds inside the 45-yard line. Third down and long after a gain of two. Let's check in downstairs with Megan. Well, after that pick, Chris Jefferson came over behind the bench, high-fived his cousins who were standing in the first row. They were hyped up, came back. This defense is reignited, especially the secondary. Everybody high-fiving and really pumped up after that last play. Well, Megan, when you're family, you get good seats, right? You know, front row, one would think. Pretty good. Third at 17. Still early on, flag down. Free play right now, and Burton take off and run a good run. I guess a lot of what Purdue lost on the penalty back. Down near the 33-yard line, a gain of nine.
Illegal formation. Offense number 73 was lined up off the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. It's Daniel Johnson, starting right tackle tonight, playing tonight because Cam Craig is out. So another Purdue penalty. And declined. So it's fourth down and long. After the missed field goal last drive, though, don't have much trust in your kicker, especially from this dif distance. It would be about a 50 yard or so. Jeff Brom says, hey, we're going to keep the offense out here, see if we can convert on fourth and seven. To fourth and seven. After declining the penalty. And now Burton with a pocket over the middle, and that's caught. And it's Charlie Jones, first down inside the 20. Surprised that FAU declined penalty a third down, but it would have pushed them back. So let, let's first talk at Charlie Jones here, man. He, he may not be the fastest guy in the world, but look at the field. So he's coming across on the shallow. Look at the understanding of where the defense help was going to go. If he turned upfield where he continued on his route, he would have been tackled short. But he feels the FAU defense, catches it, and actually cuts back where he came from in his route. If he didn't do that, he wouldn't have converted the first down. That is a great job after the catch by Charlie Jones. First reception for Jones this half. Nine for the game at 45 yards and a touchdown. Play halted right now because there's an injured owl. And that's Jaleel McCray. As he's able to walk on his own, but cautiously, slowly to get towards his sideline. Well, that student section looks a whole lot differently now, right? Than it looked earlier, about five, ten minutes ago. Five, ten seconds ago. <laughs> Fourth and seven. Right. Yeah. Austin Burton. His first start as a Boilermaker, sixth year senior. His third year of the program. On first down, it's Mockaby. Mockaby moving that body strong run near another first down. Downing's run for 94. Maccabee's run for 33. Well, they brought in another lineman once again. That's been their bread and butter to get the run game going. You have your five linemen, you have Durham, and they're going to it again. When you see this formation, look who's playing left tight end. That's an act, that's actually an offensive lineman. So heavy set, heavy run emphasis. Maccabee inside the five. Mockaby, six feet, 195 pounds. Downing, six feet, 210. Will be Lewis, 5'11, 220. Again, no King Doru out again tonight with a bad cap. So they're staying with it, though. They got number 64, Musa. He's playing your tight end, and then you have Payne Durham playing a wing set. So again, you have your typical five down linemen. But you're bringing in some extra beef, a 300-pounder, to go with Payne Durham. With the back of the end zone, and that is caught for a touchdown. What a catch by T.J. Shipping. What a catch, what a throw. Hey, get, look, Ooh, it looked like he got foot. that first one down. I think he had possession with the first foot down. Heck of a catch spinning around, catching it over the shoulder. Heck of a throw there by Austin Burton. For now, that's Sheffield's first Throwing touchdown. This is his sixth of his career. The zone for a touchdown. Play is under further review. The play is under further review. For now, a touchdown. A great throw from Burton, putting that ball in a spot where only his man, Jay, could catch it, and Sheffield did just that. And he had possession and was a foot down. Okay. That right foot that is right down foot. first, yeah. That right, that right foot right. came back down. Look at that beautiful spiral. Yeah, you see that that 
Let's head to Los Angeles and bring in our rules expert, Dean Blandino from L.A. And Dean, the call on the field is a touchdown. What have you seen so far? Yeah, replay just wanted to take an extra look. Receiver's going to gain control, and that right foot is going to tap inbounds. Then he's going to go to the ground, maintain control. Ruling on the field was a touchdown, and this should stand. A couple of great looks from our crew here. You'll see control there, and it's just that right foot that's going to tap right there inbounds, and then he maintains control as he goes out of bounds. After review, right, Dean, thank you. the Here's ruling the on the field is confirmed. by seven. So three touchdown passes for Austin Burton tonight. Two to Jones and now to Sheffield. And the point after try on Finneran is good. Still a one score game. Just over eight to play. 28-20 in West Lafayette. For the biggest Purdue experience, there's no plus like home. The Big Ten Plus app, powered by Big Ten Network, your favorite Boilermakers content streaming and on demand, plus the iconic games and exclusive events only on the Big Ten Plus app. Download and subscribe now. T.J. Sheffield, the touchdown and reception, his first this season, third thrown tonight by Austin Burton. And Purdue leads by eight, with 8-1 to go in quarter number four. And Egren with the kick, and a fair catch for J. Sean Platt. And the Owls will start from the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule brought to you by Wendy's for Purdue. It's spicy. Purdue and Minnesota coming up a week from tonight. Speaking of the Big Ten Plus app, Purdue fans learn about Minnesota. If you missed the game today, what they have done this season, you can see all the gopher games. And no Chris Hoffman bell He's out, but no problem. Tanner Morgan, that offense looks really good. Yeah, it's certainly not going to get any easier for here from here for Purdue. So... You know, if nothing else, got to get some guys healthy. Would love to have Jalen Graham back. Obviously, Aiden O'Connell, Reese Taylor, Brock Thompson. Get some of your starters back in this lineup, and it should raise the floor. That ball came out. And Perry jumped on top of it. <laughs> Second down. It's a big two-yard game. <laughs> Take Jake held out too long. Yeah, that's a tough part in some of these read options is the communication between the back and the quarterback has to be flawless or something like that might happen. The design run this time and Perry not much. Third down at about five. Oh, Mona Day. Simone Pekka. The line on the stop. FAU 4 to 13 tonight on third down. Hammond and four to either side of Perry on third and five. Pressure. Perry escapes, throws, and dropped. And then McCammon took a hit. Late, and here come multiple flags. Purdue had it stopped. It was a drop, but now FAU will get a fresh set of downs. Personal foul, late hit, defense number 20, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. We'll see Brothers coming out, and he'll be talked to, no doubt. Oh my goodness. I mean, deja vu, right? Deja vu if for Purdue and what they endured last week. No kidding. I mean, seriously, it is such a true statement to say more games are lost than one and in this second half penalties have killed both of these teams 
seems like both teams are trying to give the game away with penalties, not just penalties, but penalties in critical situations. Jamari Brown, number seven, lined up defensively top of your screen, took off his helmet, but he's still on the field here. Over the middle, that's caught open. And that's Edrin keeping his feet, Jamal Edrin. Still not down, and now he is inside the 20-yard line. Here at Douglas made the stop, but Jamal Edrin, big body, 6'3", 210, a redshirt a freshman rather from Fort Lauderdale. He's just running a post route there. Finds the pocket again. You're playing one high safety, so the pocket there is on the hash, right in between where your corner is and your safety is. That's an easy read for Nikosi Perry and an easy throw for Nikosi Perry. And at 39, now the swing pass to Mobley versus Field, and now Mobley dives down near the 12, gain of about five. Max Sullivan and the Purdue defense. Make a red zone stop. Willie Taggart and the Owls looking for the upset. Down eight, under six to play. On second down, Perry keeps it, gets a block from Mobley, and he'll pick up a first down. It's a tackle near the five. Sanusi Kane made the stop, and Perry kept it that time. Picked up seven, first and goal, FAU. Great block, great block by Mobley there. That's the one that got him out to the edge. Got him out into open space and allowed him to move the chains. Redshirt freshman, so Barry Mobley. Made the block. Cameron back in a tailback. On first and goal. He's trying to set up the screen. That's caught, and that's a touchdown. Third time tonight, it's LeJonte Wester. Wester had four touchdown receptions all year before tonight. He's had three alone tonight, and this is a two-point game. The new fans in disbelief right now. Two-point try upcoming. <laughs> You're right. He's been, I mean, if there's one guy you should have your eyes on, if you're Purdue's defense, it's got to be number one, LeJounte Wester, his third touchdown already tonight. If there's one guy you say, hey, we can't let you beat us, it's got to be number one. Let's see if FAU comes back to him down here again. Two-point conversion. He may throw it. Wester will, and he throws it towards the end zone, and that is picked off by Cam Allen. He had a man open, but poorly thrown by Wester. It looked like Jaquan Burton was wide open, back part of the end zone, but a poorly thrown ball from Wester denied FAU's chances to tie this game. Yeah, he was wide open, but uh, LeJonte Wester, known more for his pass catching than his throwing ability, and that time, uh, hey, we'll put you back at receiver next drive, LeJonte. Football on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Homecoming, the 100th homecoming here at Purdue. 28-26, Boilermakers have the lead. Purdue will get the ball back and 5-21 to play in the fourth quarter. No return for Burks. And the Boilermakers will have the ball from the 25-yard line. Well, Purdue in the fourth quarter. Defensively, it has not been a strength. Jake for this team so far this year being tested again tonight. To say the least, and that doesn't even include the penalties that they've given up in the back end. And, you know, you can't, you can't hang on the pass, right? At some point, you have to flip a switch in your head. At some point, as a defense, and as a defensive staff, you got to try something new because ultimately, I think everybody knows those stats aren't going to win you enough ball games. Running in a tailback. And here's Downing with a nice hard run. First down out near the 38. Look at that. Dylan Downing is now over 100 yards, rushing here tonight, a gain of 13. They're sticking with that extra tackle there in the game. So again, you got your five linemen. You're bringing in another offensive lineman. So you're really going with six linemen and a tight end. And so far, that's been heavy run. And not only heavy run, they've had a lot of success running the ball out of that formation. They're sticking with it again here. First time that Purdue has had a 100-yard rusher all season long. Downing 
Carmel High School in Carmel, Indiana. So look at it. You see Payne Durham there off the ball at tight end, but the guy next to him is another offensive lineman, not a true tight end. Late clock. He's downing. As he slithers his way across the 40. Picks up about four more. Eddie Williams made the stop. FAU has all three timeouts. You know, going back to the Penn State game, this was their kryptonite, right? They had the ball with the chance to take control of the game with four-minute offense and kind of refused to really even run it. But Downing's been having a heck of a ball game. He's had some nice runs in big situations. And Purdue's really emphasizing the run again by keeping that extra offensive lineman in an extra tight end in there to have extra blockers against the FAU defense. And wisely, Burton led in this play clock, wind down before each and every snap. And again, it's downing. At what point does FAU begin to start burning some timeouts? Third down upcoming. We well, only need a field goal at this point. You're down two, so no need to rush, no need to call the, the timeouts just yet. Dave, Jerry, and Howard recap the entire day of Big Ten football on the final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance. That's all coming up tonight at 11 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Former Badger, defensive coordinator Todd Orlando in his first year. He's had some great facial expressions tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's an intense dude, man. An intense moment, I feel. And there it is. It's a big, big moment for his defense. Time out. Clock with Purdue. One. This is the first of the half. And Purdue will take its first time out. We'll take a 30 second break, third and three, when we come back. Coming up after the game, the Big Ten Live football post game presented by State Farm breaks down all the action. Boy, a lot to break down tonight. 28 26, Purdue, third and four, 3 10 to play. Purdue with the football from its own 44-yard line. Look at that FAU defense. Charlie Jones, one of the best receivers in the country, is one-on-one -on -one with no safety help over top. Burton rolls and throws. It's Durham, and Durham stretches, and he'll be short by about two yards. A first down saving tackle made by Armani Eli Adams. It's fourth and short. That is a huge tackle by Armani Eli Adams. I mean, that's a big fellow. That's Payne Durham. He's 6'5", 255. Armani Adams, he's 5'11", 193. So a little mismatch in terms of the weight and the size, but look at him flying across the field. Great form tackle, wraps him up. Call it Python tackle, squeeze the blood out of the legs. It just stops him just short. So, okay, here's your game. Florida Atlantic's going to get the ball back with about two minutes left to go. Can they drive down the field? Can they score? This is where Purdue's defense has really struggled. Play clock getting late here. Oh, they just got it off in time. It's Ansel. Big kick. And this one will bounce at the five and bounce towards the goal line. And it's a touchback. So we have a break. Two-point game, FAU ball, down two. Do not go anywhere. Fourth quarter. Twenty-eight twenty-six. Purdue, 207 to go. FAU ball, Aiden O'Connell, center of your screen. Cheering on Austin Burton right now, but they're both spectators because the Owls have the ball, and here is Purdue. Jake once again, one possession games, and under Jeff Brom, 11 and 18 is the record. This season alone, they've lost two games. Penn State and Syracuse, this specific situation has cost them games. And now a strong start from OC Brothers. Minimal gain for McCammon. Do you think that not just a win, but for this Purdue team, you saw the graphic, how vital is a close win for the Boilermakers tonight to win a close oh game? Oh, my God. It's everything. It's everything. Listen, not just to win the game tonight, but for you to have film, for you to have put it on tape that we have actually turned a new chapter. This has been the Purdue kryptonite. Their defense has just not been able to get a stop in a two-minute situation. You need to put it on tape to say, all right, we actually have turned a new chapter. All three timeouts left, and that's incomplete. He's been off the mark a few times with that throw. Too high for Wester, and it's third down. Oh, here we go. Here's your chance, right? 
Last week against Syracuse, you had a couple third downs that you got stops, that but was, it was penalties. And that's right. been the story of the second half for both teams, right? So, all right, here we are. Pet Purdue is playing. Look at the safety. Once again, this is their DNA. They're playing cover one defense. You're going to leave your guys on an island. You've got to play clean. No penalties. On third and eight, Perry steps up. He's going to run it, picks up a block, and Perry has a first down across the 35. <laughs> The other risk of playing man-to-man -man coverage is you don't have somebody accounting for the quarterback. So you have all these guys with, look at this, there's, uh, excuse me, or Nikosi Perry, he steps up in the pocket. He feels really that there's a gap in a hole in the Purdue defense because they're all stuck in man-to-man. -man. That's the other danger of playing man-to-man. -man. And here they are again, cover one. Jamal Edgerton, a key block to open up some room for Perry to pick up that first down. Now this is caught by Burton. And Burns out of bounds near the 43. I just feel at some point, if you're Ron English, if you're the defensive coordinator here at Purdue, you gotta kind of gotta break a tendency. I know you want to be aggressive. I know you want to play cover one. You trust your guys. That's okay. But you know, it's just it's a confidence booster for these defensive backs. If you can sit in cover two and you can let them play zone at some point with their eyes in the backfield, that might be to their advantage. After a gain of six, Perry taking a shot down the sideline and too far incomplete. Intended for Burton. Third down. You okay with that call there for Willie Tiger? Absolutely. Deep try there on second down. Absolutely. I've almost been calling for it more throughout the game, understanding the defense that Purdue has been showing. And if nothing else, really, you know, throwing the ball down the field, you've been able, teams have been able to draw penalties on the Purdue defense. So that time you would have liked it to be underthrown, if anything, to give your guy a chance. And third and four, Purdue brings four, and that's a stretch and a catch, but short of the first down to Tony Johnson. Let him too much. He catches that. That's an easy first down. So it's a fourth down and one for FAU with 56 seconds to go. Not using a timeout, but now I think they will. So on fourth and one, and FAU will take its Time first timeout. Out. Florida Atlantic, please adjust the game clock to 58 seconds. All right, we'll take a 30-second break. Fourth and one. We come back. All right, so fourth and one, 58 seconds to go, 28-26. Brom on one sideline, Willie Tiger the other. Jake, what's the call here? Fourth and one, game potentially on the line right here. Well, it looks like FAU's going with a couple extra tight ends, a couple extra linemen, so you're thinking run, but Purdue's matching their personnel. Look at that box. Look at, look at what you see. Perry, Perry trying, and now the ball came out. It's a long ball. It's recovered by Sanusi Kane. Kane came away with it. And he's wrestled down near the 20. On fourth and one, Perry tried to sneak it. The pile was building. Eventually, the ball came free, and Sanusi came, came up with it. And the Boilermakers make the stop they desperately needed. My goodness, this has got to feel so good for this Purdue defense. Just haven't been able to get it done in this situation throughout the season. This time, fourth and one, it's an identity. FAU needs, a, needs one yard. They're going to run the quarterback sneak, a play that they lost on earlier in the game. But this time, Purdue, look at that violent, violent push by their interior defensive lineman. Not only that, you forced the fumble, and then after this play, what was so great to see, Saw Payne Durham down there. I saw a couple Purdue guys, offensive players. They're all hugging it out. They can exhale a little bit, man. They've lost so many of these one possession games. It's so frustrating. <sighs> you can exhale a little bit if you're a Purdue fan. Finally getting a win. Wasn't pretty, but a win indeed. Purdue forcing two fourth quarter turnovers. Jefferson, an interception, and Kane picks up the fumble. And now Burton will take a knee. Burton. FAU has two timeouts left. Timeout, Florida Atlantic. And we'll keep it here if the Owls burn their second. 30 second timeout. So Perry stretching here at the end, Jake. Stood up there, but watch him extend. 
the arms, and that's when it looked like it came free. What's cr I don't think he actually needed to extend. I think he had the first down. At that point, huh? Yeah, I think he had the first down. But football is not a game about what ifs, right? It's a game of what actually happened, and that time a great job by Purdue punching the ball out. That's just my favorite part, man. Just football is so hard to win. You could do everything right and still lose. You could do everything wrong and still win. But to see those guys celebrate and hug it out, that was awesome. You could feel the weight lifted off their shoulders on the sideline. I know their chest was probably a little tight. Finally winning a close one. Burned again, takes a knee. Timeout, Florida Atlantic. The third and final charge yeah, timeout. Timeout again coming up after the game. The Big Ten live football post game presented by State Farm breaks down all the action. FAU out of timeouts. Jeff Brown will not smile until that last whistle is blown. Just one more knee, one quarterback center exchange, take a knee. Aiden O'Connell out tonight. Will he be back next week? Conference play resumes for the Boilermakers. Tough matchup against what will be a ranked, undefeated Minnesota team next week at Huntington Bank Stadium. O'Connell out tonight. Michael Alimo had one series, but it's been number 12 tonight. Well, that ball came out, by the way. And now a flag is thrown. That will stop play with 33 seconds. It was a false start, but things were moving fast there. Purdue has been penalized tonight five times for 55 yards. FAU six for 64 for the Owls, all no six this half. The ball was recovered by the offense. The clock will start on my signal. The ball came out. No, that was a live ball. I was kind of sarcastically saying it, right? <laughs> I, I could not imagine on the last snap. But hey, listen. See, I, I mean, you, you can't even smile after that, right? I mean, that's... It's a win. It's a win and a close and game. A win. And Purdue will... They improved at two and two, and Willie Taggart's team put up a great effort tonight. Owls had chances, but FAU now two and three on the season. Charlie Jones he had a big night, a couple of touchdown catches without Aiden O'Connell. Still, Jones adding to his amazing numbers, and the Boilermakers hang on and win by two, 28 to 26. Austin Burton in his first start as a Boilermaker. 21 out of 29, two for three scores. Two to Jones, one to Sheffield. And we'll see if he is going to be the man moving forward until O'Connell comes back. Jeff Brown told us yesterday he was hoping that there would be some separation between Burton and Alimo before this game tonight. Maybe there is some now with the way that Austin Burton played. I certainly think so. I mean, he put up the stats. He had the one interception that was a little bit telegraphed, but aside from that, he played a clean game. He was accurate. He had a great command of the offense. Got a lot of help from the run game today, too. So overall, a good performance by the offense. Jeff Brom now 30 wins at Purdue, seventh coach to do that. He's standing by with Megan McEwen. Coach, you've had so many close games this season. Your defense gets it done in this one. What impressed you most about that final drive defensively? Well, they hung in there. That's one of the better things we've done is we played to the end. Uh, they have show fight. They want to win. That's the positives. The negative is we're not a very good football team right now. Uh, way too many mistakes. Uh, and we got we got a tough schedule coming up. So we got to get a whole lot better. You have you made mistakes tonight. You've had a lot of injuries as well, including quarterback Aiden O'Connell. But Austin Burton comes in and gets this win. What impressed you most about his play? Well, I'm proud of Austin. He really played hard and uh, he hung in there and made some really good plays at time. Made a couple of mistakes, but you know what? He's uh, he's put in his time. Uh, he did a really good job. I think it will help him get better, and we needed him today. You also were able to get that run game going, nearly 200 yards rushing. What impressed you most, especially about Dylan Downey? Well, those guys run hard. I thought we did a better job, have a little more balance. 
definitely didn't. We weren't able to create any explosive plays at all, which hurts us. We're not a really good football team, and we can't do that. But uh, the running game was better. We got to somehow figure out a way to get better, and uh, we got a tough one coming up next week. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Congratulations. All right, Megan, thank you. Coach Brom, thank you. So, Purdue, two and two, but you heard him. He wasn't shy about his words. Not a very good football team right now, Jake. And a matchup against what will be a top 25 team, Minnesota, coming up next week on the road. It's a fair statement, you know, and I think the guys in the locker room would probably say the same thing. Now, truth be told, it's always better to clean up mistakes after a loss, right? But I don't think they're going to turn on the film with big smiles on their face as they go back and watch the last 60 minutes that we just saw tonight. Certainly way too many mistakes, and that was an emphasis this week. Down to the, the very last fumble in the victory formation, not something I've been used to seeing, but I mean, all that being said, they have talent, okay? And it's cer it's certainly when they get healthy, they get some of their guys back. When they get some of these guys back, this is a dangerous team. And yeah, certainly, they can win some games. Purdue with the win. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network for our entire crew. Corey Probus saying so long. We'll take a break. On the other side, stay tuned to the State Farm Post Game Show.